The WSN cameras and crew are in Marion Local this evening. It's the opening of the high school football season at WSN. It's a matchup of two teams traditionally at the top of their conferences and teams that go deep into the playoffs when October and November arrive. It's Wapakoneta, and they are here to play the Marion Local Flyers. My name is Mark Science. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Mr. Scott Nurse. Scott, you know, these two teams are perennially good. They're always at the top of their conference. They could chose to open up with somebody a little bit less uh, talented, perhaps, but they chose to play somebody good. Well, it's an exciting time of the year, no question about it. And, and, and I can't think of a better way than to go open your season against somebody that's really going to test you in every phase of the game and every piece of what you do. And it's, it's a great way, non-conference-wise, to get ready for these two tough leagues that they both play in. Scott, it's a warm evening here in, in really mid-August, and that might have an effect on the game as well. Yeah, I think so, you know, but uh, they, they've been going through this now for several weeks in conditioning and practices, so I, I feel like they should be ready, but uh, you're right. It's warm, it's humid, it's going to be a, a, a factor. Tonight's pregame is presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima, Ohio for over 100 years. We're proud to call this our home. Scott and I are going to take a break. When we come back, we'll give you the opening keys to this game. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back at Booster Field here at Mayor Maria's time. We're the home of the Marion Local Flyers, Mark Shine and Scott Nurse. Scott, you've got some game keys for us this evening. Yes, sir. I got three keys tonight. Uh, one is early execution. Both teams have been working very hard. We talked about that, preparing for the season. This is where the rubber meets the road. Execution offensively and defensively will be a key. No breakdowns. It's often the little things that matter. Number two, emotions and control. It's the first game. You're pumped. You're ready for this, but you can't let your emotions and enthusiasm take you away from what you got to do. There will be some positive, and there will be some negative plays. you got to keep it in check and stay focused on the next play. Stay in the moment. And then third is senior leadership. Seniors lead by example. They usually set the tone, especially in game one. It will be important to see that that leadership on the field pulls up the younger players to a higher level. Experience cannot be underestimated. Appreciate your comments, Scott, and your keys to the game. Tonight's pregame has been presented to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call Lima our home. Well, the kickoff coming up right after this. You're watching High School Football, WOSN. Welcome back to Booster Stadium here in Maria Stein. It's Marion Local. It's Wapak Canetta. Our first quarter sponsor today is IC Signs in Wapak Canetta, the home of business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at iCSigns.net. Mark Schein and Scott Nurse here from Maria Stein. Scott, you know, we look at the starting lineup tonight. You're a freshman, you're a quarterback. Your name's Caleb Moyer. And you're going to start your first game at quarterback against the state champion, Marion Local Flyers. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's a pretty intimidating task. However, uh, obviously he's been in football for a, a, a long time and, and probably hears about it an awful lot. You know, one of the things that will be interesting is to follow him throughout his career. He's a 6'1", 175-pound freshman. What's he going to look like when he's a junior and a senior and, you know, grows and fills out and obviously have the skill set at that particular time will be something interesting to follow. Scott, let's put our officials on the screen for you to read off this evening for this particular contest there we go yeah tonight's week one officials are mark riley jake smith michael filkins john clay trevor lots and kurt schooley there we go our officials tonight veteran crew coming in to do this particular game you're looking at the introduction of the marion local starting lineup wapak canetta will get the football first tonight the uh Mary Local Flyers won the toss. They deferred to the second half. And we're going to get people on the scoreboard pretty quickly, I would assume. So our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Home and Insurance. Your trusted local insurance specialist. They are proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. They are a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles, and that's Holman Insurance. The Mary Local band on the field. It's 81 degrees, Scott. Uh, Look at the flag in the end zone here at the north end of the field. It's not moving. It's humid tonight, and 
for guys going both ways, particularly those big fellows up front. We saw a lot of people cramp up last night in the Shawnee Lima Central Catholic game, and we'll see what happens as this game plays out. Yeah, it took me a minute to locate the flag. It was just uh, <laughs> hanging behind the pole, not moving a bit. The Wapakoneta Redskins will get the football first. The quarterback will be number two, Caleb Moyer. He is a 6'1", 170-pound freshman. His running backs tonight will be Connor Mextroff. He wears number six. Also running the football tonight uh, will be uh, Will Campbell and George Snyder. They're also going to play some DB and wideouts for this team, particular team this evening. You know, one thing, and we talked about this last year during baseball season. We were kind of talking about Wapak, saw them several times. Coach Moyer always finds that dual threat quarterback, that guy who can run and throw. He's had him throughout his career. Well, and, and, and I'm not so sure he finds him necessarily all the time, or he develops him and makes them. He finds that athletic uh, player that he can blend and mold into his offensive strategy. The kickoff man for the Marion Local Flyers is Carson Bills. He wears number 11, and he is a sophomore. And the deep for Wapak Canetta will be a number 17 and that is Jace Knauss. And also back with him is number 10, Grant Jolly. And the 2022 high school football season for these two teams is about to get underway. Ball's popped up in the air. It's going to head towards Knauss. He's going to take the ball. Oh, he's got room to run up over the 30, up to the 35. Nice return. You know, the one thing that always impresses me as you get a good look here at the return is Wapak always seems to have size. They have good physical specimens. They, they obviously spend a lot of time in the weight room, and, and, and you saw an example of that there. You're not going to arm tackle them. You're going to have to put shoulder, helmet, body on body and to bring them down. First drive of the season will put the football right on the 35-yard line. Number six is Connor Mextroff. 17 is Chase Noss. And the quarterback is Caleb Moyer wearing number two. This is a handoff inside, and they're gonna pick about six yards on first down for Connor Mextroff. You know, last year, Wapak lost a lot of seniors to uh, graduation. Jason Mollip, Caleb Walter, Zach Rogers, Cale Rostifer, Patrick Schultz, Trevor Houts, Braden Goulet, WBL Offensive Back of the Year. They lost a lot. So that's one of the things that Coach Moyer really is looking at, is developing those skill positions and having some quality players in those positions. Second and four. This handoff is Niles, and he picks his way for a first down over the 45 to the 47. Two runs, end up with 11 yards. They take it to the 46, first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has the effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. It's kind of crazy, uh, Mark. I, I was looking here, Travis Moyer. This is his ninth season at Wapakoneta. It's amazing to me. I mean, I just it feels like yesterday <laughs> when he arrived, and uh, you know he's 189 and 47. Pretty good record. Pretty successful teams. Playoff every year, league championships. Here's a quarterback, and Moyer is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage, or perhaps just does get there. Well, and you see uh, Marion Local, good penetration by the uh, defensive line, allows the linebackers to fill, make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. That's exactly how you draw it up defensively. Here's a number for you, Scott. Marion Local has been in the MAC for 47 years. In 47 years, they have lost 94 conference games total in 47 years. Wow. How about that? Wow. 12 state championships. Quick pass, it's going to be caught on the sideline by Nos, and he's going to go down immediately. A little bit of a stall here on second down. I, I, li I like the play. It's a high percentage pass. Gives the opportunity to put your athlete out there in space on the edge, but Marion Local, nothing they haven't seen before. Good job on pursuit. We go to third down. Aiden Eifert made the tackle. He was a first-team linebacker a year ago in the MAC. You know, I like what uh, Wapak's done this first drive. They've had a couple runs up the middle. They've had a quarterback keep. They've had a little swing pass to the outside. Warriors going to roll right on third and 12. Looks and guns it, and it's caught. Yeah. Put the ball right into Jordan Schneider's hands. 
And let's see if the catch is good enough for a first down. Yep, they're giving it, it to is. him. I, I thought he bobbled that a little bit as he was trying to get his feet down, but uh, you're right, Moyer rifles this thing right where it has to be. Good job holding on to the football there and making the catch on the sideline. First Another down. Bickley Real Estate first down to the 44-yard line of the Flyers on the opening drive. It has consumed a couple minutes, two and a half to, or so. Yeah, if you're Wapak, you got to feel good about this first drive. You've got two first downs already. You've completed a couple passes. You had a couple good run plays. Good mix. Moyer will hand off this time. Now Spoh's left the middle, and boy, did he run power run that time. He is close to a first down as he powered all the way down to the 35. We'll give him nine on that one. Yeah, and uh, number five, Nathan Busher for Marion Local makes the tackle, but he pays the price. Marion Local has six starters back on defense, including number 24, Darren Meyer, who was the defensive player of the year in the MAC a year ago, plays linebacker. Second and short. Fakes it inside, Moyer's gonna look deep, looks, throws, and overthrows as he missed Jordan Schneider. Had a receiver open there. Really impressive here is the offensive line. They gave Moyer plenty of time to wait for the receiver to make his break and get in the open. Moyer just uh, overthrew him a little bit, but he had plenty of time, wasn't really pressured. Good job offensive line. Still third in about a yard in what is probably four down territory. As Caleb Moyer gets the play call from the sideline. Yeah, let's give those offensive line some credit there. Turns, hands, now, and he's going to be dropped right down immediately. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Who's on the bottom of the pile? It looks like number 24, Darren Meyer. Senior, 5'10", linebacker. Actually lost a yard back to the 36. It makes it fourth and two, and actually a lengthy two. Coach Moyer with a decision to make. Looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah, I think you have something like a little option read here where Moyer has a chance to pull it and keep it if he sees something. If not, give it to the, give it to the back, give it to Jace. Which will be the ninth play of this drive from the shotgun. Turns, handoff, now barrels inside. It looks like he picked it up. Yeah, really good read by Naus there. There was nothing inside. He just kind of sidestepped, took it to the outside where he saw a little bit of grass, picks up the first down. Really good run. You see, he doesn't fall backwards. When he gets hit, he, he picks up another yard or two. Give him the 32-yard line. First down, turn, handoff. Got the edge, they do. Naus cuts inside and gets inside the 30. Naus off to the right side. Yeah, good job by number three for Marion Local, Carter Jones. Nice job at the defensive end, making the play. Pick up a five on first down. There's the key, having success on first down. Yeah, that definitely opens the playbook for, for the uh, Wapakoneta Redskins. Let's see our official Mark Riley steps up in, picks up a towel that somebody dropped. Still 10 on the play clock. Next off, nope. Uh, fumble. Ball's loose. Fumble. Yep. It looks like and it is. Has it. So on the 11th play of the drive, from the 27-yard line, the ball gets coughed up, and Marion Local hops on it, and they will get their first possession. Yeah, great play by Drew Seitz there. Senior 6'2 linebacker, he gets his hands in there and pulls the ball loose. So from their own 29-yard line, the quarterback will be number 10, Tate Hess. He's a 6'2 senior. In the backfield with him. See who they put back there. Looks like they've got 24. That's Meyer. Here's a quick out pass. This is going to be caught on the sideline by Drew Laus. And Drew Laus goes up the sidelines, and he's got yardage. Yeah, that play, though, was really triggered by number five, Nathan Busher. You're going to see him maybe in this uh, shot here, up ahead blocking. Really good job by number five blocking to allow him to get to the outside. 14-yard pickup, another Binkley Real Estate first down. This one for the Flyers. 
see the play coming in from the sideline. That's Ethan Heitkamp, number 46, who brought that in. Ballpark crowd on the line of scrimmage. Handoff. That one, is, the ball's carried by Loss. And he will get to the 47. That'll be a pickup of four for him on first down. Brought down by the Redskins tackle, number seven, Jordan Schneider. And again, as you mentioned, when Wapak had the ball, you know, it's a good first down play to pick up about four or five yards. It really opens things up. Victor Holscher comes in from the sidelines with the play this time. Lows in the backfield along with Hess. Hess keeps it himself, and he runs into the arms of number 45, and that is Joey Truesdale. And he picks up perhaps a yard, not giving two on that play, but he'll set up third. And a lengthy four. Yeah, when you saw High Camp kind of sliding that way, you kind of had a good feeling that uh, football was going to go in that direction. Wapak read it perfectly. Darren Meyer will be in the backfield this time, along with Hess, as they go trips left. Hess looks, looks, throws, and overthrows his intended receiver. Tried to get it to Nathan Busher, and it falls incomplete. And they go to fourth down. It brings on the punting team. You know, this is something Marion Local likes to do an awful lot. You'll see them line up with trips on one side and then go back to the weak side, short side of the field for a receiver, a lot of times in single coverage, and it's very successful. But that time, just a little bit overthrown. So after an initial first down, Aiden Eifert will step in to punt. He gets a great wow. punt off. Wow. Into the end zone. That's a 51 yard punt. Aiden Eifert. Well, you know, it's warm out here. That ball's very bouncy, right? <laughs> that just jumped <laughs> off his foot, though. Great punt. You know, that's stuck in the end zone like your wedge shot. Yeah. <laughs> like my wedge <laughs> shot, I wish. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know what I did this summer? I took up bowling. Because you don't lose as many balls. Uh, that's right. They, yeah. And they send them right back. That's to you. right. They keep coming back. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to walk around looking for them. <laughs> All right. From the 20 yard line, second possession for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Some success on the first possession. They went 11 plays before a fumble stopped their drive. Let's see what comes about in drive number two. Yeah, and a good response by their defense after a fumble to be able to hold Marion Local really to uh, minimal gains. Nextroff takes that handoff, and this time not much room to run. Our premier sponsor tonight for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For your initial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Perhaps a yard game. We'll call it second and nine. In the first quarter, which is moving around, around rapidly, as we're under five minutes. Tim Goodwin said he's got a good mix of starters and returners on both sides of the ball, but the linebackers should be a strength, and they've done a pretty good job so far. Warrior rolls out, throws, caught. She put the ball, a nice run out here, big strong run by Will Campbell. Will Campbell catches the ball and then powers it up to about the 38-yard line, and that will be a Binkley Real Estate first down. Yeah, nice touch by Moyer there to put it right where the receiver could pull it in and do some damage with it. I like what I've seen from Wapak. They've had four different ball carriers, all four of them have lowered their shoulder and picked up an extra yard or two or three after contact. You just saw an instant replay. Our instant replays were made possible by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak in Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens. First down. Moyer runs this time. And he dives over as he runs through the tackle of Carter Jones. And he has a good run of about eight yards to the 46. Hundred and seventy pounder runs pretty hard, Scott. Man, they do, and they, you know, they're again, nice yardage there, pickup. It's Second down and about three yards. That's what you want if you're a Wapakoneta Redskin. Comes Jordan Snyder in from the sideline. We got uh, oh. we got the Hawaiian uh, well, theme tonight. Everybody's in their uh, 
luau gear. 80, 80 plus degrees, why not? Huh? Why not? Yeah. It feels like it out here. It's better than doing it on a 12 below That's night. Right. <laughs> Hand off, Mextroff will get the first down and more as he gets into flyer territory to the 49 yard line. That's a five yard pickup for him. Our first downsider sponsored by Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move. Well, Mextroth had that fumble on the first possession. You saw the last time he ran the football here. He had both arms on the football. He's going to protect it. Sometimes those kinds of things are uh, actually helpful. They, they serve as a reinforce and reinforcement and a reminder. Moyer in the shotgun. He's the only back there. He's going to go up under center. And his coach is going to call a timeout. Timeouts are brought to you by Cook and Sons Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook, Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating.com. And we'll be back right after this. You're watching High School Football on WSN. We're back at Booster Field here in Maria Stein, Marion Local, and I think uh, Coach Moyer saw something he didn't like in the formation, said we're changing the call timeout. Well, I think his quarterback was unsure, too. He started out in shotgun, then it ran up under center, and I, I think that's a huge key, a key of experienced coaches as they recognize immediately when something's not right and you use your timeouts wisely. You had a first down there. You don't want to waste a play. You're at midfield with an opportunity to maybe score. Um, I, I think that was an excellent timeout. Caleb Moyer, Connor Mextroff in the backfield. This is Moyer, quick out. Ball's put right on the money to Jordan Snyder. Yeah, I like that. It was on the outside hip, exactly where it needed to be. And uh, Snyder with really good hands there, puts two hands out, catches the football, all hands. No shoulder pads, no chest, no arms, just hands. Seven, seven yard pickup to the 42. Second and three. This time it'll be Noss in the backfield along with Moyer. And whoa, blowing through there in a hurry was Darren Meyer and the defensive POI last year in the Mac showed why he won that award. Yeah, he just read that play right away. And, 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 and again, good job by the defensive line to match up with the offensive line and provide that, that scene for Meyer to get in. Meyer now a senior at 5'10", 195, and he made his presence felt. It now goes to third and five from the 44. Mark, that's that leadership we talked about mm -hmm. at the beginning of the game, that senior leadership. You see guys uh, just kind of rise up on game night. That's what you need. Good teams have those. Play clock's running down here. We're down to four already. See if they can get this off. Then we're going to take uh -huh. another timeout. This one I don't think is one coach wanted to call. Timeouts are brought to you by Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook, Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Timeout. Back after this, you're watching high school football on WSN. Mark Labor Day on your calendar, the second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom All family of dealerships. The race begins at Sunnydale House where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. To sign up, Google Life, Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the links to runningsignup.com. I don't think Coach wanted to call that timeout, but he had to. The play clock was getting away from him. Yeah, he said, uh, you know, he said before the game, he said they're probably one of the best programs in the state about Marion Local, and we're one of seven teams that have the opportunity to play a state champion in week one, a team that's won 16 games in a row. They can't, they can't have timeouts like they just had. Third and five, Moyer rolls right, steps around the corner, and he got blasted and threw it up in the air, and who put the hit on him? Well, guess who? Somebody named Darren Meyer. The pass went spinning out of bounds, falls incomplete. We go to fourth down. Yeah, you can kind of see that coming. That was a collision that was coming. And 
he was fortunate yeah. actually to get rid of it and uh, and have it go out of bounds. Caleb Moyer is not running off the field with a great deal of authority right here. It's hopefully he is okay, but he took a shot. Yeah, that last uh, series they used two timeouts, moved the ball about five yards, had an incomplete pass out of bounds, and now they're punting. Kyle not, a, not a good series. Kyle Beach is the punter. The returner is Nate, Nathan Busher, and he's going to kick that towards the sideline, and it will kick out of bounds. So with a minute 46 to go, the Flyers will get their second possession. Here in this particular quarter, while we do the changeover, the Ren Wiffleball tradition continues. Tune in Monday night at 8 p.m. to WSN for the pageantry and spectacle that is Ren Wiffleball. The biggest little game on earth, only on WSN Monday at 8 p.m. I watch it every year. Mark, are you? Are you <laughs> I do. I watch it every year. I love yeah. that game. Yeah. yeah. Caleb. Or Patrick Candler, Dave Bowen, it is a wonderful event. Second possession, Flyers. Quick look, Hess going to throw it deep. He's got a guy out here, and in the battle for the football, it's going to fall incomplete. He was trying to get it to Nathan Busher. Coverage was by Will Campbell. Yeah, good defensive coverage. We got a flag on the play as well. Taking a look to see. No, no, no flag. I thought they were moving the football back. It'll be on the 27-yard line as we go second and 10 flyers. I bet they come back with a run right up the middle. Meyer and Hess in the backfield. This will no. be Meyer rolling, or, or Hess rolling right, throws. Eifert makes the catch, and he's got... Nathan, uh, Nate Metzger all over him, but still makes the catch. And they're going to mark it a little bit short. Yeah, I thought he was across the, the, the line to game when he caught the football. Defense drove him back a little bit, but uh, really nice catch. I, I like the rollout here. Uh, it, it shortens that throw, allows the quarterback and receiver to kind of get get uh, moving at the same speed. Nice catch. With a minute to go in our opening quarter. Yeah, it looked like to me he was well in front of that Third first down one. Marker. Yeah, we're on the Marion local sideline there. Fans thought so. Here's a handoff inside and first down yardage. Let's see. Meyer takes the handoff. Meyer takes the handoff. Yeah, I think he's got enough. I, I would agree. Let's see what the call is from the field, however. Boy. There they marked it. I was waiting for everybody to unpile and get a call. Picked up just a yard, but that's what they needed. First down from their own 37 as the first quarter is winding down. Kyle Adi came in with the play from the sideline. Hess and Meyer in the backfield. Play clock getting away too. Quick handoff on a little pitch. This running on the corner, trying to get the corner's loss. And he gets knocked down at about the 44-yard line. Very high percentage forward pass there, right? And that will bring our first quarter to an end. We're scoreless as we head to quarter number two. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. On to the second quarter we go. Our second quarter night is sponsored by IC Signs in Wapakoneta, the home of business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at iCSigns.net. Scoreless, we head to quarter number two. Flyers with their second possession. They're facing a second and three from their own 44. Hess takes the snap. That's not Hess. That's a direct snap that went to Kyle Adi. Kyle Adi's got room to run. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds. No, he didn't. He fought his way down the sidelines. Big run, Kyle Adi. Yeah, number 22 there for Wapakoneta. Corbin Mitchell saved a touchdown here. Or Adi would have been in for six. And they're going to bring this one back. Let's see what the call is. So that's going to wipe out a big run. It would have been in the red zone. Yeah, it looks like it was somewhere right around the line of scrimmage where the flag's laying. Yep. 
It's a hold. Yep. Had they gotten to the red zone, our red zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Visit callmattsheating.com to schedule for your free estimate. But we didn't get there. We're going to take it all the way back because of penalty. Well, Mark, first quarter, pretty good football by both sides, offensively and defensively. We did have one turnover. Now we have a big play uh, brought back because of a penalty. So kind of two mistakes by, the, by each team, which you expect early yeah. in the season, early in game one. Tate Hess back in at quarterback. Quick pass out. This is caught on the sideline by Kyle Otte, who just had the big run a moment ago. Short gain for Kyle. Grant Jolly out there on the tackle. No gain after contact, basically. I'm going to call it a... Maybe a yard or two? Yeah, they're going to set it down on the 32, which means he would have lost a couple of yards. And he's going to go to third and about 17. Audie's back in the backfield again. And he will take the snap and run play that was so successful a moment ago, but he's going to get chased down from behind. Nice play by Jaden Rampola. Yeah, that, uh, that's a big guy coming from the other side of the field, chasing down your speed back. Great speed. Five-yard loss, the ball goes back to the 27-yard line. Aiden Neifer back into punt. See what happens after his 51-yard effort his first time. That was not quite the same effect. Ball goes right into the hands of Grant Jolly, who's brought down immediately by Drew Laos. You know, I really like that. In high school, you have a lot of guys who will just let that ball go. Uh, if they have to, unless it just comes right to them, they'll they'll kind of uh, step away and let it go. And if, in, in that case, that was a low liner of a punt. It probably would have rolled in another 10, 15 yards. But uh, good job by Grant Jolly to come up, make the catch. Didn't advance it much, but he probably saved about 15 yards. Good football coach and longtime friend of WSN. Dan Allison says if you don't field it, you lose 15 yards on the average. And you're right. That yep. one was going to hit and go. Here's Wapak, third possession. Back in the quarterback, Moyer, and he's going to run to the right side of the formation. Good to see him back in the game. Well, so essentially, uh, Wapakoneta takes over where they left off their last possession. They punted the football, had a couple good defensive plays, pushed Marion Local back, benefited from a penalty, and then a uh, smart play on the punt return, and they're essentially, uh, you know, no impact from their previous possession. Three-yard pickup, second and seven. Again, the play clock's running down. We're at nine already before they break the huddle. And they hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Moyer slips, makes a good handoff, however. And that time, Nas. Well, you got Moyer uh, running to the sidelines to get the plays, and of course, that's taking up some time with the play clock. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, sons to play quarterback and they did the same thing where they had to run to the sideline to get the plays and and on nights like this when it's hot it really drains a lot of your energy you don't think about it but you're running about 40 yards each direction every single play third and along two wapak from the 46 of the flyers here come the flyers they didn't jump still five on the play clock here they come warrior keeps it himself trying to get wide and he does. He runs through the tackle of Carter Jones. But we got a flag down. I got multiple flags down. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, from the from the where the flags are, it's probably a hold on the defensive line trying to get to uh, allow Moyer to get the outside. And once again, Moyer gets up trying to check his senses a little bit. His left side of his body is bothering him some. Well, he's a freshman. You know, it's this is big boy football. He's graduated yeah. into against a state champion, perennial state playoff. Ball goes Football all the team. way back to the 45. So it's going to be third and about 11. I mean, you think about it, Mark. He was playing junior high football last year, right? A little, <laughs> so, little bit different than playing against uh, Darren Meyer and Aiden <laughs> Eifert and some of those guys, huh? That's right. Big yeah. jump. 
He'll learn how to deal with that, though. He's got pretty good size, yeah, he though, does, for a freshman. Yeah. 6 1, 170. And this time, we're going to get a Marion local timeout. Timeouts are brought to you by Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook, Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Timeout. Back after this, you're watching high school football on WSN. TV44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, and WSN is a part of that celebration. Would you donate $40 as a way to say thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online at WTLW.com backslash donate, or you can call 419-339-4444. Marion Local with their first time out. Wapakoneta facing a third and 11 from their own 45. Nextroff in the backfield along with Moyer. Moyer to throw, swings it out. Mextroff it bounced to him. Is that a lateral? Nope, they're going to call it an incompleted pass. Yeah, I couldn't see it, Mark, but I think yeah. I, I feel like one of the Marion local defenders got a hand on that football. It looked like it came out of Moyer's hands and then sort of uh, fluttered. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks yep, like sure uh, did. a little bit of a hand and uh, caused the ball to hit the turf. Good job by the uh, Marion local defense. I, I, sorry, I couldn't get a name. Couldn't tell who that was. Kyle Beach in the punt for the second time. Adi is deep along with Busher. Second punt for Beach. High snap. And he's just going to kick it right out of the back of the end zone. And we get the flags. Let's see how this goes. Well, that's interesting. That'd be a, a penalty, and I believe it brings the ball out to the 20. And uh, well, the ball was fl fluttering right around the 15, so it probably was a smart decision. If you kick it out of the back of the end zone, is that a safety? I'm, I'm fuzzy on the rules with this one. Let's see what the call becomes. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think if there's intent, intentional do it, yeah. then uh, then it may be two points. <laughs> well, I know we're having an officials conference right here to solve this thing. We're gonna get the word here. Let's see. Our head official today is Mark Riley. It'll be first down flyers. So that's going to be the second turnover for Wapak Canada Redskins, and this one's going to put them in a very bad spot. Yeah, I thought if they were going to give them two points as a safety, uh, that might have been better than giving them the football right there at about the 15-yard line for six or seven points. But uh, Well, you know, Scott, we don't have a sponsor for safeties. We have a touchdown sponsor. That's Alan Davis. We have an extra point sponsor. That's Pantry Pride. <laughs> but we don't have a sponsor for safeties, so... We're going to put the football down on the 20. PA guy says it's on the 19, so we'll go with him. And that means we're in the red zone. Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone is your home the energy, in the energy efficient zone. Visit callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Hess in the backfield. Meyer in motion. Hess is going to roll left and keep it. And they're swarmed under. There's Mextroff to get him to throw him down, but there were a lot of white shirts involved with that one. Well, and Hess was a little tentative there. He wasn't fully committed to that edge, kind of uh, running a little bit, uh, you know, unsure, and the uh, result is not much gain. So they lost a couple back to the 21. We'll go second and 12. Well, as expected, Mark, the offenses on both sides having a little trouble here and there, and then uh, special teams, you know. Meyer sets up beside Hess. Rolls right, does Hess. Tate looks, throws. Diving attempt. Is it oh, caught? they're going to give it to him. They yeah. are. Diving catch, Nathan Busher. 
Wow, really good job by Busher to get his hands under that football. I thought it kind of bounced off the turf, but it looks like he got his hands under the football, able to come up with that catch. Referee right on the spot, immediately calls it a catch. Call it down to about the 12 yard line. It's gonna be about three. They need to get inside the 10 for a first down. Meyer in the backfield, along with Drew Seitz. Adi's in the quarterback position. Adi rolls right, steps inside, and Adi gets inside the 10. Did he get to the first down? I like that direct snap. It essentially gives you an extra blocker. It is. You know, you don't have a quarterback just handing the football off. You got an extra blocker up there, and it's enough for the first down. A Binkley Real Estate first down. Binkley Real Estate has the effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you the results that move. You know, Mark, I've done a lot of Marion local games over the years, and one of the things that always the opposing coaches say is we cannot have turnovers. Turnovers oftentimes are what uh, Marion local ca capitalizes pitch. on. Laws takes a pitch out of the eye. And essentially, that punt out of the end zone was a turnover. It gave Marion local mm. the ball in the 20, 19-yard line. And, um, you know, if Wapakoneta can hold them out of the end zone here, it'll be a really good uh, stand for them. Football is at about the eight. Second and goal. Andrew Pullman checks in. He wears number 23. Adi's in the game along with Darren Meyer. And Hess will be the quarterback. Back to shotgun, trips left. Look for that receiver on the right. Hess will keep. Rolls left, steps inside the five. And we're looking to see where the football's set down. It's going to be third down from about the three. Yeah, I thought the left side of the Marion Locals line moved just a little bit early, but no penalty. We're here on the flyer side of the field, and their crowd comes to life. They want to see the first score of the game right here. Offense going right into the teeth of the uh, Hawaiian Hula Luau group down there. Bows is behind Meyer. Hess is going to roll right, keep it himself. Steps inside. Did he get oh. to the end zone? He did. He crossed the plane before the ball popped out. That's what the call is going to be. Tate Hess on a three yard touchdown run, puts the Flyers on the board. Touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance needs, and more. Okay, you get a good look here. Hess breaks the plane of the end zone. You see the referee will immediately signal for a touchdown, but uh, I guarantee you Tim Goodwin's not happy about that. you got to hold on to the football. Carson Bills is the PAT guy. He wears number 11, 5'10", sophomore. Extra points are sponsored by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means the best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. And with that extra point, the Flyers will take a 7-0 lead. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Mary Local makes the Wapakoneta Redskins pay for a bad snap. They go 19 yards, six plays. It took them three minutes and 32 seconds to go. A three yard Tate Hess run. Add on the PAT by Carson Bills. It's 7 0 Flyers as Bills he, goes into kickoff position. He kicked that pineapple right into the luau. <laughs> Kickoff sails to the out of bounds. Yes, it's going to skip out of bounds on the far side of the field. Didn't catch that one quite right. And now with 4.28 to go, Wapak Canetta, who has, they've moved the football reasonably well, Scott. I mean, a couple of penalty here, a turnover there. They have, uh, and, and they got to feel good about their first half here. Basically, the only score was because uh, of their own doing. Uh, so they played a pretty good football game other than that one play. So uh, if they can move the football here and answer 
uh, it would be very important. I think especially since the Flyers get the football first in half number two, I think this is a kind of an important drive to see if they can get some points on the board. Yeah, and as, as I mentioned earlier, so many times Marion Local, that's what they do. They capitalize on a mistake, right? If you make a mistake, if you turn it over, you fumble, you kick the ball out of the end zone like they just did, they capitalize, they put points on the board, and a lot of times that's the difference. Coach Moyer is asking for the play clock to be reset, and it has been, back to 25 as they move the football to the right hash mark. These coaches, they, they check out everything, you know. I don't know how they keep it all straight. <laughs> My favorite people in the whole <laughs> wide world. Love coaches. Yes. So Caleb Moyer will go under center. Hands off. This is Mextroff, and he's going to have a nice run up near the first down yardage. We're going to give him nine to the 44. Speaking of coaches, I saw Kurt Gettemuller before the game and uh, had the opportunity to see them a couple times this summer at the Finley team camp. I worked some games up there, and uh, uh, they're going to be they're going to have another good year in basketball. They're big, as well. aren't they? Yeah, they're big. Yes. They can move. They 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 play well together. Um, you know, just a nice nice group. Second and one. This is Niles. Niles will pick up a Binkley Real Estate first down as he gets to the 45-yard line. Speaking of coaches, I saw Bill Goodwin here tonight and his wife, Judy. That's Tim's father, of course, longtime coach at Allen East and been assistant coach here for a while. Good to see them. Judy's had some health issues. Glad to see both of them out tonight at the football game. Yeah, it's kind of amazing how you see that a lot. A really good coach has a son that, that becomes a really good coach. Um, you know, just spending so much time together and learning. Boyer, back to pass. Pressured, steps up, and now we'll run over midfield before he gets whacked out of bounds on the far side of the field. He took a pretty good hit from Ethan Heitkamp. You know what's great, though, Mark, about these coaches is I, I feel like for both of these communities, they, they're communities that have great work ethics. The parents have great work, work ethics. The whole community has a sense of uh, accomplishment uh, together, and, and, and you see that reflect in the football teams. They work hard every year, and that work seems to pay off. You see other communities yeah. that, that, that don't always enjoy the success, uh, but that sustained success, I think, is brought on by – you know, by the, the community, the parents, the, the families that uh, are here in these communities. So it's fun to see. Warrior bobbled the snap that time. Still going to get the first down as he gets inside the 45. Pretty good presence, pretty good head of uh, peace of mind by the quarterback. And I didn't catch the snap cleanly and still picked up three and a weekly real estate first down. Yeah, I think that probably was supposed to go to uh, Jason House on that misdirection and uh, as you mentioned just good good job of well, thinking thank instant replays made possible tonight by Lee's famous recipe chicken in Wapak and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens back up under center two and a half Moyer. minutes yep handoff sweep right this is Will Campbell and he has not much room to run on the far side of the field. A really good job by Marion Local stacking up the offensive blockers and then shedding their blockers, making the tackle for a short game. 7-0 Flyers on the home and insurance scoreboard. Marion Local, is, the, the Wapaka Redskins are moving to football, but it's taking them a lot of time. Marion Local is making them earn it on the ground. And well, and you know, they burn a couple timeouts. Yes. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to – you want to save it in case you need one. I think they're not quite sure about what this play call is going to be, too. They're under – yep, here's our third timeout of the half. Again, yep. didn't get the play call in quickly as they would like. Timeouts today are sponsored by Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook, Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating. Timeout. You're watching High School Football on WOSN.
We're into season 18 of the Sports Report on Friday nights at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage all season long, Fridays at 10. Wapakoneta has taken their final time out of the opening half. They're facing second and eight. High snap, Moyer looks, throws over the middle, it's caught as he finds Will Campbell. Campbell runs up the sideline, dives to the end zone, did he get there? Well, he hit, he landed on the pylon. I'm just Let's not sure if he stepped out first. Let's see what the call is. Two officials are going to get together. Here's the replay, Scott. Well, nice play by Moyer here to put the football exactly where it needed to be. I like the play call coming out of the timeout. A little crossing pattern there, and I'm not sure if he steps out right there with his left foot. To the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone is your home in the energy efficient zone. Visit callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 41-yard pickup to the one, 126 to go, but no timeouts. Under center will go Caleb Moyer. He turns, hands off, Mextroff dives in the end zone. Did he get there? He ran headlong into Darren Meyer, and he got there. Yeah, there's not many times you're going to hit Mextroff and not, not uh, lose there. He's, he's tough. He's experienced. He's been doing this a while. You see him go forward after the contact. He wanted that one. That's your senior leadership right there. Touchdowns are presented by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, especially in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. Mark, we talked about that at the top when we talked about, you know, there'll be some positive and negative plays. Wapak had a negative play. They gave up a touchdown. They come right back, stay focused on the next play in the moment and they turned around and knotted this thing up right before halftime. Preston Meyer bangs through the Pantry Pride extra point. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and the best service you can count on. That extra point ties it at seven. Mary Local with a chance to score before half. You're watching High School Football on WSN. The Wapakoneta Redskins go 65 yards in seven plays. They take 3.05 off the clock and they knot it up at seven. As Kyle Beach will do the kickoff duties. Marion Local has two timeouts remaining in their effort to untie this thing before half. Beach hammers that one and it heads to the end zone. Wow, that's a big boot. That yeah, was. Five yards deep. And that's, not, that's not win, Nady. There is no breeze there, tonight. He just clobbered that you're one. You're absolutely right. The flag is still, it's not blowing. He just, uh, he got it all. You know, that happens to me once in a while in the tee box. I'll, I'll get, <laughs> I'll, with that driver, I'll just yep. get it all. Yeah. And uh, not very often. Get a nice look there. There's not many places, not many football fields in this uh, state of Ohio where you've got green elevators in it, the background. It is great, and, uh, man. I, I just love coming down here. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole, you know, Mercer County area, Shelby County, and, and the way it all sets up, I, I really like coming down here. Yeah. Hess in the backfield. We're knotted at seven. See what the Flyers can do. Hess steps up, avoids traffic. And now he's going to run out of time. He's going to run into the arms of number 45, I believe, on the far side, Joey Truesdale. Yeah, smart play here by Hess. Don't throw it. Don't set up Walpock for an easy score on an interception or a fumble. Yeah. Just uh, protect the football, eat some clock, maybe get out of it. Well, they would like to score, of course, but Marion Local does get the football first in half number two, so certainly don't want to make a mistake right here that would give the Redskins points. Under a minute to go, it's second and almost 10. Hess turns, pitches, Adi trying to get to the edge. And he runs into the arms of a very big tackle by Jace Noss and a couple of his buddies. Yeah, Noss is good size. He's got good speed. We see that on the, on the offensive side of the field. And you see him close here, make a nice yep. tackle. Really good job by Will Campbell, number eight, too, Scott, to turn it back in, not giving the edge. Well, that's exactly what he's supposed to do is turn that back in to the linebackers yeah. who are pursuing and well, work perfectly. Flyers are going to choose not to run another play in the half. It's been an entertaining opening 24 minutes. we got a halftime show coming up in just a moment. Halftime adjustments are sponsored by Al's Woody Diner. 
We'll be back with that in just a moment. Marion Local 7, Wapak 7. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Halftime from Booster Stadium. We're tied at seven. Our halftime adjustments are brought to you by Al's Woody Diner in Wapak. The best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. You can call 419-738-9111. Scott, interesting first half. Marion Local has held on defensively a couple of times by forcing turnovers, but it's also each team with seven, and Wapak's moved the football some. Yeah, I think well, both teams have moved with the football really well. I feel like Marion Local needs to get something going offensively. They haven't really had much success. Wapak has had more success, but... Marion Local scored, benefited by the Wapak play. Well, each team has punted twice, too, so the defense have held up pretty well. It's just 7-7. Right. It's, it's pretty good football for the first game of the year, really. Um, fairly mistake-free, but a couple mistakes have both led to uh, to scores. Marion Local got on the board first, a three-yard run by Tate Hess. Six plays, 19 yards, three, hundred, or three minutes and 32 seconds came off the clock. And then Wapak answered. They went uh, seven plays, 65 yards in three minutes and five seconds. A short run by Mextroff, and we're tied at seven. We're back in just a moment with our adjustments, what we can look for from both teams in the second half. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back at Booster Stadium. It's halftime. Marion Local 7, Wapak Canetta 7. Scott, we've kind of gone through some things we saw in the opening half. What are you looking for in half number two? Well, I think, uh, you know, what, both of these coaches make their big money with halftime adjustments, right? And I, I, I think you're going to see a little bit of adjustment by both coaches. But I think if you're Marion Local, they've got to string some offense together. They really haven't had any success offensively in this game. And, you know, normally that's sort of an unusual thing to say about Marion Local. They're getting beat at the line of scrimmage by Wapakoneta. I think if you're Wapakoneta, you got to keep doing what you're doing. You had one mistake, it cost you a score, but, but mostly you're winning this football game. You're moving the football up and down the field. You got seven points, it's 0-0, basically 7-7 at halftime. So I think you stay the course, keep doing what you're doing, and, uh, and let that take you where it needs to take you. Our halftime adjustments brought to you tonight by Al's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta, the best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Second half action coming up right after this. It'll be Flyer Football. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight has been sponsored by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. Member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. That's Holman Insurance. And they are sponsoring our scoreboard this evening, which reads seven for the Marion Local Flyers and seven for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Scott Nurse, big drive coming up, I would think, here for the Marion Local Flyers to start half number two. Last year's game was relatively close at halftime, and the Flyers took over with their big offensive line and went on to a, what, 27-7 win a year ago. I think this first drive might be very important here. Well, Mark, you've done a lot of games for Marion Local over the years, and, and, and I've done quite a few myself. Um, a lot of times you see a close game at halftime, and then Marion seems to really turn it up a notch in the second half and uh, put distance between whoever they're playing. So I, I think the, you're exactly right. Marion's going to get the football first. Wapak really has to focus on standing up defensively and trying to mute that drive, not allow much, because once that ball gets rolling for Marion Local, a lot of times really hard to stop. Our third quarter sponsor today is IC Signs in Wapakoneta, the home of Business Startup Package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. And we are just a couple of seconds away from having our second half, half kickoff. While we got a moment, I want to talk about the John Reed Award. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, and commitment to others, as well as excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at wosn.tv backslash John Reed. 
And this can be a head football coach in your community, could be an assistant on the varsity level or a middle school football coach, freshman level. We just looking for someone who is a, uh, a Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, and commitment to others as well as excellence on the field. And Scott, I've had a, the privilege of being a part of the selection committee for us uh, since this thing's inception years back, and that is a really solid group of men uh, coaching our athletes that we have out there right now. Yeah, John Reed is actually at the top. Uh, you know, 200 win, wins over the years, uh, 18 years coaching um, at Coldwater and Parkway. Um, and, and, and I had the, the opportunity to meet him years and years ago. And what, what, a, what an amazing gentleman, professional, uh, just a great person. You, you know, Scott, the, the first time I met him, uh, he and I were both invited to speak at a church um, to a, a men's father-son breakfast type thing. And um, I was talking to Coach. And I said, Coach, how did you get the job at Coldwater? And he said, when I interviewed they asked me, what can you do for cold water athletes? And he said, love your sons like they were my son. Now, not a lot of football coaches say that in their interview, right? right. You know, we're going to come in and we're going to be tough and we're going to be strong and we're going to – and coach teams were like that, but he also had that, that quality about him as well. But, you know, that's exactly to your point is, is you know, that's, that's how you are with your sons. You're tough, you're strong, you encourage them, you discipline them. All those things that go into being a great football team, team also going to you know being a great parent to your son and, and so that makes sense to me well i checked the uh, weather channel scott the always accurate weather channel it was 81 at kickoff we dropped to 80 wow. so it's cooling off out there in a, in a major way are you a little bit surprised we haven't seen more of the cramp situation uh, you know on a hot humid night well it's it's uh we had an, a lot of timeouts yeah we did we had a lot of timeouts we had a delay on that uh, kick out of the back end zone for the referees to kind of counsel on that so we've had a lot of play stoppage which allows the players to recover a bit so uh, I, I feel I, like that's helped i had breakfast with a retired longtime trainer uh, a couple of weeks ago and he said you know one of the problems today and i don't mean the problem problem but kids live in air conditioning yeah. And it takes a lot more to condition them to be outdoors in the hot, humid situation. And I know we're all products of the, the 60s and 70s and whatever when we didn't have the whole house air conditioning type things. And, and, and it's just more difficult to condition kids to play outdoors today. You're absolutely right. I, I know, you know, when I sit in the office all day and, <laughs> and you go outside and it's, you know, 75 right. degrees, it feels like 90 yeah. because you're not used to it. So Of course, the other side of that is when you finish your hot, humid workout, you get a chance to go out and be in the air conditioning and recover. There's Jacob Sherrick. That's yeah, I talked to him this summer, as yeah. I mentioned, at Finley Team Camp. He helps out with the basketball. Yep. So what a great what, what a great young coach, uh, you know, up-and-comer. Yeah, and a in, solid in math teacher on top of that. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you know I've, I've always said the best coaches are teachers. Now, sometimes coaches don't always go in the classroom and do what they're supposed to do. But the, but when you – that's what you got to do on the football field. you got to learn how to do it in the classroom, that's too. That's mostly what you're doing as a coach yep. is teaching. All right, here we go. Second half action coming up. This will be the kickoff by Kyle Beach. He lined one in the end zone not long ago. And let's see what he does with this one. Flyer footballs. We start half number two. Ball's headed to the goal line. Instead, it will be caught. And on the run back is Adi. Adi's got some room to run. And a nice tackle there by Corbin Mitchell. He had a lot of room to run if Mitchell doesn't make this stop. Well, Adi's dangerous. Um, he's just pure athlete. Uh, I've seen him on the basketball court as well, and uh, he's dangerous. He's had one long run that was called back, and you can see there he's uh, just one play away from, one, one defender away from breaking that into a really long run. Flyers will start on the 27. Their quarterback tonight has been Tate Hess, 6'2", senior. Joining him in the backfield right now will be, is that 46, I think, height camp. Let's fakes it. And the short run, that looked like a busted play. Well, and yeah. Redskins reacted favorably. Yeah, Marion Local offensive line got a really good push, uh, but the linebackers for Wapak filled the gaps, and there was nothing, yeah, he, absolutely nothing he there. He turned like he wanted to hand off going the other direction, and I'm not sure uh, which player... Um, the mistake was attributed to, but either way, it's going to be a, a loss of a yard. 
That's not how you want to start. Back to the 26. That also brings number 34, Drew Loss, into the game. And he goes in motion. Quick pass out, and that's low. Is it a lateral? It is incompleted pass. Yeah, I think he rushed it there a little bit. He had he had some time and just uh, tried to throw the ball too quick. Really didn't have a good handle on it, threw it in the ground. So very quickly, it is third and 11. I want to give some credit to the uh, coaching staff here. Travis Moyer, the head coach for Wapak, his assistants, Mike Bogan, Zach Chambers, Brent Copeland, Jace Copeland, Todd Herb, Rob Finn, Bill Garland, uh, Blake McGew, Devin McBride down to the lower levels, Reed Miracle, Keaton Metz, Austin Seifer, and Nick Truesdale. All those guys put time and effort into this team. Trips left, three-man rush. Hess looks, looks. And now the pack protection break breaks down. He throws it up the field and it's knocked out of bounds. Defensive play made by Will Campbell. When I mentioned Wapak's defense has been pretty stout tonight, they do a great job defensively in the backs. Yeah. Secondary, no, nothing there for Hess to throw to. He scrambles by some time, still nothing. And then a knock away, PB, PB, pass broken up, PBU. Rampant was putting pressure on. Here's the punt by Eifert. That's a good punt and a fair catch. So Wapakoneta comes right out of the chute. They hold in a little over a minute and get the football in reasonably good field position right about their own 39-yard line. Redskins got what they wanted. They absolutely did. Uh, and let's give a little credit to the Marion local football staff as well. Uh, Tim Goodwin, the head coach there. The assistant coaches, Dan Koenig, Kevin Otte, Greg Bruns, Jacob Sherrick, as we saw earlier, Layden De uh, Delawander, Adam Berkey, Chad Otte, B.J. Walters. I remember B.J. playing basketball, yeah, I do. great basketball yeah. player. Mitch Eversall, championship staff. There's Caleb Moore, the quarterback, and he's going to run off the right tackle. Somebody dove with his legs and knocked his feet out from underneath him after he picked up a couple to the 41. You know, Mark, uh, we talked about the, at halftime, Marion Local stringing together a little bit of offense, getting moving the football, and you saw in that first series maybe a busted play, then a, a swing pass that was thrown at the ankles of the receiver. So they're just not executing at this point. I, I don't think it's play calling or anything else. I just don't think they're executing, and, and that may be in part to that Wapakoneta defense. Boyer in the backfield along with Nas. And he's going to get a handoff, ran right past the blitzer, and steps through another tackle and spins up over the 45-yard line. Yeah, nifty run there by Noss. He made about eight cuts here within about a two-yard width on the field. Uh, nice job picking up uh, additional yardage when it looked like nothing was there, just through good vision. He got five. We're looking at uh, the 46-yard line. Need to get to the 49 for a first down. Here comes Moyer back in with a play call. Noss is going to set up to the right side this time of Caleb Moyer. And didn't get him to draw. Hard count. Yep, hard count. Play clock at three. And they get it off. Moyer keeps it himself. Right side run. And he's not going to get to the first down. He needed the 49. He got the 48. Sets up fourth and one. Yeah, good assignment football you see there. The back was covered. Moyer had to take it. And two guys on the edge. They're going to look at this. They're going to measure it. Nope. Just going to call it fourth down. Yeah, it looks short to me. This year in crew led by Mark Riley gave a look at it. It looks like Beach is going to head to punt formation. Now, I, I thought they might go for it here. Less than a yard, uh, about midfield. Nathan Busher is deep. High snap, he reels that one in. There's a good punt. Busher tracks it all the way back to his own eight yard line. Makes the first guy miss though. Busher up the sideline, that's a nice run. He's gonna get back to about the 27 or eight yard line. So both teams go three and out and Mary Local will get a possession. Yeah, Busher does a nice job catching that football over his shoulder. He's, he's actually going away 
in the opposite direction. He's able to uh, pick up some positive yards there and make a pretty good play out of what looked like a, a punt that was going to pin them deep. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. Appreciate their support tonight. And again, this doesn't go in the stat book, but they're at the 28 now. If he would have let that punt go, it goes in the end zone, they get the ball at the 20. It's a pickup of eight yards. Hess steps inside a defender. Hess is on the run. And still plowing ahead, and he's going to get all the way up to the 45-yard line. And that 18-yard run becomes a first down, a Binkley Real Estate first down. Binkley Real Estate has effective sales approaches, effective marketing campaigns, an extensive network that will get you results that move you. Good yep. run to the 45. Well, Hess did a nice job of putting the ball in the belly of the, of the running back and then pulling it. And then 64, Caden Ware for Wapakoneta was caught off guard, off balance, wasn't able to. Adi's a quarterback. Man in motion. Follow that. Adi man. runs right. Nope's going to step back and throw. He's going to throw it deep. He's got Hess out here, and he caught it. What a play. Adi to Hess for a first down. Athlete to athlete. We talked about that earlier. I, I thought he was going to run and follow the blocker. He, he throws a perfect spiral. Right to Hess, Hess has to lay out for it. Great job, great hands, secures the football, big game for Marion Local. 27 yard pickup. I was watching Adi throw balls in the sideline at halftime, thought he's a running quarterback, not now he isn't. Laos heads left, cuts back inside and powers inside. Well, and this is what we expect, Mark. Yep. Typically in the second half, Marion Local moving the football through a variety of methods. You see a little short, uh, forward pass there actually and Laos picks up quite a few. First down Flyers. Inside the 10. Yeah to about the nine. It's a Binkley Real Estate first down. First and goal from the nine. Remember this punt was fielded at about the eight yard line. Yep. Audie's in the backfield along with Hess. Laos in motion, this is Adi, and he has nowhere to go. He runs right into the arms of Mextroff. What a play he made right there. Yeah, he read that all the way. Met him, helmet to helmet, eyeball to eyeball. Second team Western Buckeye League linebacker a year ago, and he forces a one yard loss back to the 10. Mextroff goes 6'2", 210, and he's got some mobility. Well, he's got mobility, he's also got some strength there. You can see he spent time on the sled, on the, on the, uh, you know, the squat rack. You can see that moving his legs. Myers in the backfield this time. Adi's in shotgun formation. And we're gonna get, what? A flag for warning. sideline warning. Okay, I get it. You got to give them room to operate with a chain crew on the sideline and all that, but we got excited kids, okay? Yeah, they, and they're all bundled down there yeah. in, on the edge, on the you know, right on the corner of the player's box. That's just a warning. Yeah. That doesn't have any penalty to it at this particular point in time. But it does give Marion Local yeah. a chance to see that defense go back and rehuddle. Adi, Meyer. This is Adi going to run right and looks to throw, short pass, and it's dropped. That's one of those difficult ones to catch as he tried to put the ball into the hands of Drew Seitz. Here it is again, Scott. Yeah, he actually throws a pretty good ball. It's right on his hip there. Seitz should have pulled that in, just uh, just lost the handle. Yeah, he knows can, it. Yeah, he knows it. He's, he says, that's one I know I should have caught, and chances are the next nine times he will catch that one. Yes. Third and ten. You know, those, those are the kind of things that happen game one, and, and, and you get so focused. See what the Flyers do here in the Matt's Heating and Cooling Red Zone. Your, is your home an energy efficient zone? Visit callmattsheating.com to schedule a free estimate. Third and 10, somebody jumped. So now we're gonna go back to the 15 yard line where it'll be third and goal. That's big. 
That's big, third and goal from the 15 now. Walpock's got a pretty good defense. They play really well collectively as a unit. See what Marion Local does here. Do they stay on the ground or do they put it in the air? We well, got two opportunities probably to pick up 15 yards. Yep. Hess is back in at quarterback. And he's going to throw. He's got a man. Got on open the on the wheel route and dive in the end zone. It's going to fall incomplete. Looks like a little bit of hand fighting, chicken fighting on the sidelines, but it's going to go incomplete. Yeah, that's uh, Nate Metzger out there, number five, I believe it is, defensively for Wapak. And, and, and you can see him coming out of the backfield. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of contact there. Yeah, he had a hand on the shoulder. That's number 45, Joey Truesdale. And now, looks like we're going to look at perhaps a field goal attempt. Yeah, the crowd on this side, uh, Mark, wanted that pass interference. Yeah, they did. They didn't get it. Carson Bills is the kicker. This is going to be from the, what, 21-yard line, 22-yard line. We're looking at a 32-yard field goal attempt to unknot the game. And that kick is up, and it is short. Short. I think number 17, Jace Naus, may have gotten a hand on that football, caused it to be just a little bit short. And the Wapakoneta Redskins hold, and we go Turn the football back over, and they will take possession for the third time in this half, second time in this half, with 5.31 to go in the third. Well, must good. be neon night. We, we already had the, uh, what, the Luau night or whatever. It must be neon night here. Yeah, well, it, it feels like uh, a Luau night, as warm as it is out here, but uh, you're right. Redskins went uh, three yards, or three uh, plays, ran uh, nine yards, had to punt. And this will be their second possession of half number two. Handoff. Short gain. That was Mextroff with the carry. You know, both teams got to feel pretty good right now. Wapak, good job defensively holding Marion Local out of the end zone. With no points there, no field goal. And then uh, Marion Local did move the football all the way down the field. They got to feel good about that. Of course, a penalty pulled them back. Comes Moyer back in with the play call with 15 on the play clock. Moyer sets up alone in the backfield this time. He's going to roll right, short pass. Mextroff, and he's brought down immediately. Big hit that time by Drew Seitz. Yeah, perfect form tackle there. But, you know, I, I, I always like those plays, Mark, where you roll the quarterback out, you shorten that pass, you make it a much higher percentage pass, and they pick up uh, about three yards. Could have been more, but uh, great tackle. Third and a long four. Third and Moyer guns it out this time, and it's caught as he finds Jordan Snyder. That's going to be a Binkley real estate first down. Nice catch by Snyder on the sideline. Taken down by Hess for a first down game. Wapakoneta really focusing on the edge for both passing and running. Seven-yard pickup, and that's a first down to the 33-yard line. Brings up a first down for the Redskins. Boyer in the backfield and will take this snap. Handoff. Not much room to run that time. That was Naus. Yeah, it looks like number 58, Wyatt Greenwood in there. Perhaps a yard pick up to the 34. It'll be second and nine. Scott, you talked a little bit earlier about the offensive line for the Flyers, but this Wapak and other offensive line has done well too. We'll try to get their names to you after this play. Second and nine. Quick pass out, caught by Naus, and he's gonna go down immediately as he gets to the 35. 
Well, you know, I believe uh, Wapak ran this play in their first series. Why don't you read off those result. offensive linemen there? They guys had a nice game. Yeah, tackle Ryan Price, guard Jacob Kirkpatrick, center is Grant Childress, guard is Nate Schneider, and the tackle on the other side is Tyler Hauser. Really good job. Throw in the tight end, Grant Hauser, who wears number 85. Those guys have had a nice football game. Well, and, uh, you know, Wapak's been running double tights mm. a lot, trying to keep those linebackers pinched in. It gives them a little room, a little grass on the edge. Third and seven. Moyer, quick out, and he missed his man. Look at a flag on this one. What's this one all about? He tried to find Ryan Camper. See Moyer spin the ball there. He's getting more comfortable. You can tell. It's going to go against Wapak. It looked like an ineligible receiver downfield was the first call. Yeah, it was a side judge who was over yeah. in that area, so it may have been, uh, yeah, one of the linemen re released. And a penalty will be declined. Fourth down. So we go to fourth down. And for the second time this half, it looks like the Redskins will be forced to punt. That brings in Kyle Beach. Kyle Otte goes deep along with Nathan Busher. Well, in that exchange of possessions, now Marion Lofo has picked up about 20 yards from the last time that uh, Marion. Punting's been a little bit of a shaky thing here. Bad snap. That one's a little high, but caught. And there's a good punt. And it's tracked down back here by Busher. Busher's going to room up the left side to run. And there comes a flag in, too. Let's see what that call is. Is see if we can see the call in here somewhere, Scott. Yeah, I didn't see anything there. Nice job by Nathan Busher, though. Yeah, fielding punts yeah. is a hard thing to do, man. You know, the ball's spinning all different directions. He's made two catches over his shoulder and, 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 and nice returns out of him. The call was a hold. So let's see where this one ends up as they're going to back up the Flyers. Our instant replay tonight are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and in Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And we're back to what? About the 27 or 8, Scott? 28, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure what the call was. I'm assuming well, the official, hold. yeah, it was, the first call was hold. And I did not, I was writing on my stat page here. I'm not sure exactly what Mr. Riley signaled, but that was the initial call. Here's Hess, going to roll right to keep it himself, and he's got room to run. Tate Hess, first down and more. Hess still on the run. That's been a good play for them here as he gets a Binkley Real Estate first down over the 45-yard line. Yeah, almost identical to last series. They ran this play, and he picked up 18. He does it again here, yep. picks up about 18. Just good vision, kind of using his blockers and, uh, you know, working his way upfield, and then a little extra effort at the end, picks up about yeah. four or five more. Scott, he's listed at just 165, but he doesn't go down easy. No. To the 48-yard line, it actually was a pickup of 20. So first down near midfield. Darren Meyer in the backfield along with Tate Hess. Here comes Adi in motion. Hess going to lob it out deep, and... He's got Adi out here. He also had Laos out here, and neither one of them were able to secure the football. That'll fall in completely go to second down. Yeah, that was interesting. I didn't see either receiver actually either turn around and look for the football. Just a minute 13 to go here in a rapidly moving third quarter. Hess has Meyer in the backfield with him. Marion seems to be picking up the pace of the play clocks earlier. This is Laos. He's got room to run. Cuts inside and runs into a couple of white shirts as he crosses midfield. He gets to the 48, so we'll call it a four-yard pickup, but it makes it third and six. Yeah, I always like these kind of plays where you bring your athletes out into the edge and allow them to kind of, you know, use their vision to find a little crease, a little seam, pick up a couple of yards here. Actually laid it down at the 49-yard line, so it's third and seven. Get a good 
good look at the Marion local band there. Lau's in the backfield along with Hess. Blitz coming, low snap, Hetz picks it up, gets away from Mextroff, rolls. Got a guy chasing him and throws it out and it's tipped away and missed. I think now it's got a well, hand on Well, I think that. you're right. Man, that's your worst case scenario, right? You get a low snap to the quarterback and, and you pick the football up and, and you got number six, Connor Mextroff, looking you right in the eyeballs. Jaden Rampula was one chasing Hess. Yeah, we know he's got speed. And the ball goes in and out of the hands, so we're back into punt formation, goes Eifert. Wapak secondary's had a good game. Eifert, good kick. Wow, wow. And that's gonna sail into the end zone. Well, he had a 51 yard in the first half and a 49 yarder here in this half. Redskins football. Yeah, that was impressive. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for sports and teams that more sports and teams than anyone else in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WSN.TV. Hey, we got it running again, too. It struggled last spring and over the course of the summer, and they got it going again, and that's a great thing to see with 15 seconds to go here in quarter number three. Boyer tries to run left and cannot. Stopped. He is submarined. And that will bring quarter number three to an end. It was a scoreless quarter. And we'll head to quarter number four, still tied at seven. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard today has been sponsored by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Proud to bring you tonight's scoreboard. Member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. It's Holman Insurance. We go to the fourth quarter. Our fourth quarter is sponsored by IC Signs in Wapakoneta, the home of business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check out icsigns.net. Second down from their own 17-yard line. They need 13 for a first down. Fourth quarter action. Boyer throws it over the middle. It's tipped away, I believe, by Nathan Busher. Diving attempt for the reception, but will fall incomplete. Third down. Yeah, probably the only place he can throw it low and away. Pretty good throw, pretty good velocity. Uh, just wasn't able to hang on to it. You know, you mentioned uh, the MAC 47 seasons. Uh, WBL, Wapakoneta. 85 seasons, unbelievable. 85 seasons, this is yeah. season number 86 we begin here. Wapakoneta all time is third on the list at 372 wins, 282 losses and 10 ties. Nice in the backfield along with Moyer. A little mesh point problem, that's going nowhere. Well defended up front by the guys wearing blue jerseys including number 80 on the bottom of the pile, that's Dan Bruns. Well, and as expected, Mark, uh, you know, week one, defenses, a lot, of, a lot of it is read and react, right? So the defenses are both playing pretty well right now. The offenses are, are struggling a little bit here in the third and the beginning of the fourth quarter to uh, really sustain drives, puts things together. Three possessions. This will be the third punt of the half as Kyle Beach goes into punt formation and waiting a football near midfield or a couple of flyers. That punt goes to Kyle Otte at his own 47. He's got room to run. Watch out, Kyle Otte up the sideline. And he stumbled over by the sideline, but that's a nice return. Well, you know, you see him field the football here at about the 47 yard line. And uh, just a really good job of getting to the outside, reading his blocks and getting to the edge here, picking up a good, nice return. but. Marion Local has picked up about 20 yards on each one of those three punts. The first one was fielded about the five. The second one was about the 20, 25 when it was fielded. That one was fielded about the 45, 47 yard line. So they're picking up yards in the exchange of possessions. From the 24 yard line, the Redskins, whose defense will be tested. 
And what do we got? We're going to get a timeout by the Marion Local Flyers. Timeout for us, too. Our timeouts are sponsored by Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook at Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, call OPAC. You know, you get Osgood. a good look there at the Marion Local Cheerleaders. I had to have some printing today. I did some printing, and uh, Jen Lee, who's got a daughter, Kirsten, who cheers for Wapak, was asking about the game. I'm pretty excited about the game tonight. It's a handoff inside. This is Meyer, and he is not going to go down easy. Meyer to the 16 for a pickup of eight on first down. Yeah, I think that was a good timeout by Tim Good when he recognizes we're late in the game. That's great field position, first down. It's got to be a good play. Give his guys a little breather. Make sure that everybody's aware of their assignments and uh, comes out with the first down and eight. Now it leaves second and two. Anything can be called now, any play. Tate Hess will go under center. This is Kyle Adi. Kyle Adi inside the 10 yard line. First down. And that scrum just keeps pushing around. That will be a Binkley Real Estate first down. We're also in the red zone. Red, red zone sponsor and that's Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? There's a call mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimates. Put a furnace in my place and uh, yeah. does excellent work. Yeah. PA man says the ball's on the nine. We'll go with that. Meyer, Adi in the backfield. I formation behind Tate Hess. This is Meyer. And he goes down at about the six yard line, perhaps the five. Good surge by the offensive line. And we're gonna put it on the fives. That's a four yard pickup. Drew Louse coming into the football game. Six foot sophomore goes 180. Put him in there with Adi, who's 170 pounder, and also Darren Meyer, who's 195 pounder. Meyer's the up back. Pitch, Adi. Got the edge, Adi into the end zone, he goes from five yards out. And Allen Davis insurance touchdown, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home business insurance needs and more. Well, Kyle Adi set it up with his punt return and then got him into the end zone. Yeah, really good toss there by Hess. He was just about to do a pitch and and the lead fullback was right in his, in his vision, in his path. He had to hold that for a second and kind of overhand toss it back to Adi, but uh, no, no impact to the end result, which was six on the board. And we're gonna get an attempted PAT and it's not gonna fall in favorably for the Flyers. So their hole is open now because it's gonna be a 13-7 game. Let's see if the Redskins can get on the board after this. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. After you leave. Extra points today are served up by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and the best service you can count on. That one did not succeed, hence the 13-7 lead, Scott. Well, Coach Moyer talked about it. He says he's really excited and confident about this season. He's a firm believer that good things happen to those that work hard. And he said our kids deserve all the credit in the world. They've been dedicated, committed during the off season, and they've done everything we've asked of them. They're extremely high expectations of this year, and they said there'll be highs and lows of the course of the season. We need to stay patient and take one play at a time. And I think this is evident on, on this particular possession. They're gonna have to take it one play at a time. Nosh chose to field the football on the sideline rather than risk it staying in bounds. And his run back will take it to about the 26. And I think they just gotta stay patient here, take one play at a time. Don't, don't try to panic and get it all back 
in a hurry. They've got plenty of time on the clock. Do methodically move the football down the field to answer that Marion local score. Well, actually, the football is going to be put down on the 22-yard line. Wapakoneta has had the football three times in the second half. They have punted all three times against this much improved from the half-to-half -half Marion local defense. Yeah, no question about it. The defense for Marion local has stepped up. This is Knox with a short run on first down. He picks up a couple to the 24. Yeah, I thought he had a little space there to the outside. He cut it back in, actually ran over one of his linemen there and uh, held him up a bit, allowed Marion Loco to pursue and get a short gain, only a yard. So we're looking at second and over eight yards, almost nine. Boyer will keep himself this time a run left. He will get over the 25 before facing a herd of blue shirts. Yeah, it looked like number 28 for Marion Local. Great job pursuing from the backside. Drew Seitz in on that tackle from the, 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 from the opposite side, left side of the defensive line. Linebacker Seitz, Darren Meyer, Aiden Eifert, those guys have had a good football game. Absolutely, you see uh, Seitz doing a little stretching there, trying to stretch out the hams and the, and the calves. Probably getting into that point, Mark, that you talked yeah. about where cramps uh, can be an issue. Big play, third and six. Trailing by six. That's back batted down. Number 30, it looked like. I think that's who it was, wasn't it? If it's 30, it's Nick Randley. 6'2", 175, big, big Paul goes up in the air. You see that right hand. Going through two blockers, how about that? Yeah, just great awareness, great, you know, great coaching. You know, that yeah. comes from coaching, the awareness to get a hand up in the passing lane. Last time, big punt return from Kyle Otte helped set up a touchdown. He and teammate Nathan Busher setting up right at the 40. You know, that's one thing that Marion Local separates them from a lot of other teams. They seem to make the big play at the right moment when they need it most. Adi backs up to his 35, gets a good block from Busher. He's still on the run. Adi up the sidelines, going to get tackled by the kicker, I believe, Beach. Second big punt return in this half for Kyle Adi. Yeah, his punt returns have been the difference in the second half. They've given Marion Local excellent field positions, and uh, they've capitalized on the first possession. See what they do here. They, they were on the 24-yard line the last time he ran one back. This time he runs it back to the Wapak 20. And with 7.16 to go, they are in excellent field position once again, right outside the match heat and cooling red zone. Well, and I talked about it, you know, they seem to make the big plays when they need it most. And it was 7-7, they make a big play, they score, now they come right back with another one. Meyer, this is Adi, getting a block from Meyer. He will get inside the 20. Before the guys wearing white jerseys respond, he picked up a couple. We'll call it the 18-yard line. A dangerous weapon Kyle Adi has been tonight. Well, absolutely. And they've used him a variety of ways. He's thrown the football. Yep. He's caught the football. He's run the football. He's punt returned. I mean, he's really been instrumental in what they've done, especially in the second half. 5'870 pound junior. He's deep in a tailback position right now behind Darren Meyer. And we'll take this pitch. And he gets inside the 15. The ball's loose. I think Wapak has it. Well, let's see. A couple guys in there fighting for it. Official signaling. I, I thought number 45 for Wapak fell on the football. 40, maybe that's 49. Looks like Marion Local was able to recover that. Well, Adi is on the bottom of the pile with the football. There you can see the ball coming loose right there. And it hits and a helmet, comes yeah. right back to him. Comes right back to him. What a <laughs> fortunate play. Yeah, good job and by Mextra, though, to strip that football. And a heads-up play by Adi. Bodies all around him, being held, and still grab the football after a four-yard pickup. Third down. Need to get to the 10. 
This is Meyer. And he runs right into the arms of Caden Ware. And he's going to be short of the first down. Well, when you work hard, good things happen, right? And that last play, that fumble, hit a helmet, comes right back to him. That's a good thing that happened for Marion Lopa, obviously. Well, this is going to be a huge play. It is fourth and one from the 11. Wapak holds. They stay in the football game. Well, it's interesting. They kick a field goal here, and they essentially put the game out of reach as well. So uh, it looks like they're, they're going to go like for it. If it were me, I'd have a hat on Adi. Oh, Adi in the shotgun. Yep. Follow the blocker. Sights in motion. Myers ahead of him. And he cuts back inside. First it. down and more into the touchdown zone goes Kyle Adi. That's just power football, Mark. Assignment football and Adi following it and looking for the seat. Our touchdown slider sponsored by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, especially in auto, home business insurance, and more. And a wonderful touchdown run by Kyle Adi. Two good blocks by Darren Meyer and, uh, and Drew Seitz, two of your standout seniors. They make two great blocks there, allow Adi to get into the end zone. And now the extra point attempt, spot sponsored by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. And they are looking at going for two, and instead Coach Goodwin takes a timeout. That's a Cook and Son Plumbing Insurance timeout, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us at Facebook, Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Timeout Flyers going to go for two when we come back. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Mary Local Flyers, after the PAT attempt that did not succeed on the previous touchdown, they're going to go for two right here. This is Adi in shotgun, trips right, single receiver left. Lost in motion, quick pitch to him, turns the corner, and did he get into the end zone? He did. That will push the Flyer lead to 21 to seven. They just went 20 yards, four plays. They took 225 off the clock. And with under five minutes to go in the game, they are in a great spot, Scott Nurse. Well, three, three outstanding receivers out there blocking allowed that play to happen. And of course, when you have Adi at quarterback and he, and he passes it or hands it off like he did, um, you, you've got to focus on him. Let's go to break. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Two short touchdown runs by Kyle Adi, set up by punt returns by Kyle Adi, and that has put the Marion Local Flyers into a 14-point lead on our home and insurance scoreboard. Yeah, Kyle Adi has definitely put his mark on this game, no question about it. But, you know, a couple other guys too, uh, Drew Seitz, Darren Meyer, both have been outstanding offensively and defensively. Here's the kickoff by Carson Bills. He pops it up towards the left side of the Wapakoneta formation. There's a good run on the sideline by Will Campbell. Will Campbell has good run field position for his team. And now the Wapakoneta Redskins, who have been stymied here in half number two, got to put some points on the board in a hurry. Well, this is week one, game one. It's non-conference. So this is an important series for Wapak to, to, to not just lay down and give up on this game. They, they want to try to execute against, you know, clearly one of the teams perennially. That's a big word for me. <laughs> every year. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, every year they're one of the best teams in the state, if not the best team in the state in their division. So uh, this is yeah. this is a great uh, opportunity for Wapak to to see what they can do in Mary, pressure. Mary Local's gone to D6 this year. They're in Region 24 after winning D7 last year. Moyer makes the first two guys miss, guns it out. It's caught by Jordan Snyder. Pretty heads up play by the freshman. Yeah, I was just going to say, Mark, let's not forget he's a freshman. We got a long way to go. I, I was about to say, Scott, if you just watched him this evening and didn't look at freshman in the book, you wouldn't know he is. Well, I keep forgetting that he is a freshman, and uh, he, 
nice job there of making a couple guys miss and then and executing the pass. Binkley Real Estate first down to the 35 yard line. Pick up a 15 on first down. Of course, he's probably got some extra coaching on the side. Yeah, you what do you think? Boyer to throw again. Going to throw it long this time. He's got a guy out there. He's got a man. Oh, what a play. Will Campbell cut into the football and almost had a six. His adjustment on the football is outstanding as we watch it again on the Lee's Chicken replay. Yeah, he did a great job right at the end, last two steps of cutting inside, adjusting to the football. Almost was able to pull that in. Hess was back there in coverage, but that was a very good adjustment to the football. He just wasn't able to secure. And well thrown. It was. About 50 yards worth of well thrown. Yeah. 45 anyway. Second down. Connor Mextroff's in the backfield along with Caleb Moyer. Rolls, throws, caught on the sideline by Jordan Snyder. Be close to the first down. That's a tough throw. Did you see Moyer going to his yes. left? He does it fundamentally, squares his shoulders there and is able to put that ball right where it needs to be. Great throw, great catch, close to the first down. To about the 27 yard line where it is second down on the eight yard pickup. They've got the down marker at three, third down. I think it was, that first yeah. down was incomplete in the end You're zone. You're right, it is third. Good call. Big play. High snap, he reels it in, does Moyer, throws. And that goes through the hands of his receiver on the far side of the field. That was through Grant Jolly's hands. And now it is fourth down. Well, that's one that should be caught. That's where you uh, got to get your hands up and catch the ball coming in. And, you know, you could have wet hands, wet gloves. It's pretty pretty humid out there tonight. Well, but I, but I, local Flyers fans have come to life. They know the importance of this particular play. Well, I like Moyer. If you notice, he's spinning the football when he's back there to throw. It, it tells me that he's comfortable. He's not in a panic. Redskins need a couple. Moyer's going to step up. That's a broken step play. Step up and not going to get there. Too many blue shirts. Well, that looked like a broken play. It didn't look like everybody was uh, on the same page on that play. Moyer had nothing else he could do but try to run the football forward. Did not make it. Once again in the second half, the Flyer defense stands up. Two yard loss back to the 29 and Flyers take over on downs. When this game comes to an end, Scott will do a little post game show for you. I'll hand out our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. We'll try to track down a player or a coach when this is over to get an interview as well. And uh, so stay with us when this one comes to an end. We've got 354 to go in this one. Think the ball's gonna stay on the ground? You better believe you it. Better They're gonna use it. every bit of the play clock as well. Yes, hands off. And there's the defense really stepped up and got Adi that time in the backfield. We're gonna get a timeout by the Wapakoneta Redskins. We're gonna to go to break. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. The Wapakoneta Redskins take their initial timeout of half number two. Our timeout tonight are brought to you by Cook and Sun Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook, Cook and Sun Plumbing and Heating. Really good crowd here tonight. Uh, as always, here's a run. Laos is going to cut back inside. He's going to get up around the 35 yard line. He did get to the 39 for a first down, but still a good eight yard pickup. Yeah, Wapakoneta's going to use another timeout here to stop the clock. Since they're taking the timeout, so will we. You're watching High School Football at WOSN. Redskins have taken their second timeout. Marion Local facing a third and about three. This Laos, no, this is Adi. Cuts back inside. Did he get to the first down sticks? Pretty it's gonna close. Be close. It yeah, looks like they're gonna close. mark it. Right it is. 
that Pinkley Real Estate first down is going to wrap this one up. Yeah, I think so, Mark. You're right. I think Wapakoneta has one, one timeout left. Adi got to the 40, picked up four. Talking about schedules and who has who coming up, Wapakoneta goes right into the Western Buckeye League action next week. Looking for their schedule right here. I had it written down somewhere. They get uh, OG, I think, next week. Here's Laos, and he runs. How about the tackle by Jaden Rampant? He has been a speedy demon all over the field tonight. Yeah, yes. I tell you, a lot, a lot of positives you can build on. Wapakoneta is probably going to go down with the loss here, but they have uh, a, lot, a lot of positives they can build on here. They, I think yeah. their defense has played pretty well. Their offense has shown signs of, of uh, spark. Yep. Uh, but this is a pretty tough D place to win. Difficult schedule early in the season for the Redskins. They have Ottawa and Glandorf at home next week. Then they're at St. Mary's and then Van Wert at home. So their opening schedule is very difficult. And we're going to get movement up front. Marion Local, well, they're here next week against Macomb. Perennial D7 team up north of the, of the Finley area. Macomb is at Galleon tonight. And then on September 2nd, they have Minster, and September 9th, they go to Delphi St. John. So schedules for the both of these two teams over the next three weeks. Well, I'm very favorable for Marion Local because they're home. First three games are at home. Yep. And uh, they don't go on the road until St. John's on, on the 9th. And uh, that, 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 that's really beneficial. Nice facility at Delphus now. They've redone the field over yeah. there, and they've really done some really nice stuff over there, so that'll be a good event to go to. WSM will be here next week. This is Meyer running up the middle. He's going to get to the 35. Ball's, Ball's loose. loose. Yep. And, well, the Redskins said we have the turnover. And they do. So Wapak's going to get a chance. Still in this one with 2.12 to go. We will be here next week. Jerry Snodgrass and myself will be down here to do the game with Macomb. Macomb's one of those programs that, again, has been pretty good for a yes. lot of years. Jason Algy, one of the, the, the top football coaches in Northwest Ohio. He always puts out a good program. 2.12 to go on, their own, on the 35-yard line. Thanks to the turnover, Wapox with a chance. Moyer and Mextroff in the back, backfield. Moyer's going to roll to his left and throw, and this is receiver that time. Yeah, that's one that just a little bit timing route. The, the, the route was uh, just maybe a half a step late on the out. They'll fix that. You know, one of the things I like about both these coaches is, is they schedule these kind of games mm -hmm at the beginning of the year in their non-conference play. So that they want to know where they stand. They want to, they want the weaknesses to stand out immediately so they can work on them and be better as they get into league play. And, and I think that's the mark of a really successful coach. They're, they're not looking for easy wins. They're looking for challenge. Second and 10, Moyer looks. And just runs through the first tackle and then gets clobbered by Partington. Yeah, we have uh, yeah. a, a lost a helmet there. Yeah, you got to set out a play when you lose your hat. Sites is a guy who lost his helmet. And, of course, being a very wise young man, he carries his helmet off the field so everybody can see who made the play. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning. Third and a whole bunch. Moyer Balls did all the way it. back to the 44-yard line. Moyer did a nice job, though, Mark, of keeping that play alive as long as he could. He just wasn't able to escape. And he throws that ball over the middle. It's caught this time by Will Campbell. Short of the first down, but makes it a manageable somewhat fourth down. And we got a flag on this play. Well, judging from where it's yeah. at, it's probably going to yeah. be a hold. This has been a fairly clean play game until... Fumble, and now this penalty. What do we got? Look at our official Mark Riley. He says hold, and that's going to bring it back. Those are killers, man. Those spot fouls, those are killers. Yeah, they said uh, number 53, Grant Childress, but uh, 
all the way back to their own 46 yard line. And they need to get to the 25 yard line for a first down. So we're looking at about what, third and about uh, 29. Yeah, instead of a pickup of 10, they lost about, they lost 10 and. Pass caught on the sideline as he finds Jordan Snyder. Snyder doesn't go down easily after a short pickup. Well, and you had two Marion local. See, to me, that's just coaching. That's details. You had two Marion local defenders on the outside. They're not going to allow him to get out of bounds. They push him back into the field of play to make sure that he can't get out and stop the clock. And is to the 46-yard line, so it's an eight-yard pickup. And again, they need to get to the 25-yard line for a first down. Warriors going to roll right this time. Chased and throws it over the middle of the field. And that time it goes through the hands of Will Campbell. And falls incomplete. And the Flyers will take over with 38 seconds to go in this one. Well, you can't throw a better ball when it hits the receiver in the face mask. That looked like one of those I'm going to run before I catch it type yep. things. His helmet uh, looked like he is already looking up the field. and So we're going to put the football down at the 46. Wapakoneta does have a timeout left, but uh, at this point I can't imagine they'll use it. And the Flyers will go to the victory formation. Mark, this has been a good football game. It has though. been a really good football game. As you see, Hess takes the kneel down. And the play clock means we don't have to run another one. And we're going to start the handshake parade. But you know what, Scott? I think that the Wapakoneta Redskins, yes, they're going to walk out here with a 21-7 loss, but they put up a very valiant effort this evening. Well, and it was just a few plays here and there, and, and you know Coach Moyer will get those fixed. And, you know, you got to recognize the power of the opponent you're playing as well. You know, Marion Local is a machine. They came in 16 in a row, uh, now, now 17 wins in a row. Tough opponent to overcome on their home field. And uh, I, I feel good about Walpox after. This one comes to an end. Post game show coming up right after this. It's 21 7 Flyers. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back at Booster Stadium here in Marion Local where the Flyers have taken a hard fought 21 7 win over the Wapakoneta Redskins. Our first order of business is to present our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page from tonight's game. Scott, it didn't take long to, to kind of look through this one and make some discussions about it because the man who had the biggest effect on the football game tonight and our Stolly Hustle Award winner is Kyle Adi. Yeah, Kyle Adi, no doubt, left an imprint on this game. And most of it came in the second half, but he, he was only 9 for 28 yards rushing from the line of scrimmage, but he had a 22-yard pass uh, that almost went for a touchdown to Hess. He had two punt returns that were 43 yards total that set up both of the second-half touchdowns for Marion Local, and then he scored twice himself. So he, he really was uh, a huge part of that second-half resurgence that we saw from Marion Local. Thank you very much for your analysis this evening, Scott. I want to thank the athletic director. That would be Dan Koenig, who helped us get all set up this evening. I want to thank our crew tonight here in the – Broadcast booth doing all the last minute preparation for this one was Ken Richter, our camera people tonight, our Lexi Waddle and Nick Richter. We appreciate their efforts. We're going to try to catch an on the field interview if we can do that before this one wraps up. You're watching High School Football, WOSN. We're back at Marion Local, where Marion Local has defeated Wapakoneta 21 to seven. Now we've got Kyle Adi with us tonight. Kyle, so you run the football, you throw the football, and you got two big returns. Which, which one gives you the most conference tonight? Uh, probably just getting back on the field and run the ball and hitting some people and getting hit by people. Just gets me back into the game of football, feels good. Well, Kyle, we were watching at halftime. You were warming up throwing the football. Then you come out pretty quick and you throw one deep and you make a great throw to Hess. Well, we put it in. Probably they won last year. They wanted to put in, put me in at quarterback, try it out, just like my brother did, and 
we put plays in that that's where I am and I worked out that play. Kyle, your team has two short drives because you make excellent punt returns. What, what do you see? What are you trying to feel when you catch the football back there? Just get yardage, get upfield, and catch the ball and go. Catch the ball and go. That's all it is to it, right, man? So you're our Stiley Hustle Award winner tonight. It's a hot night on the football field, but a good time for you. Yeah, it's, it's hot. First game, it's going to be hot. Glad nobody on our team is cramping, which is good. So hydrate next week come out and play hard. What, what did coach say at halftime because defense really turned it up in the second half and, and Wapak could not move the football? Just really got on our butt because uh, Wapak was just running down our throat. They were going, doing everything on our defense. So we really put it in that defense and stuck to it and got it done. And now it's McComb next week and then into Mac play. Yep. Okay. Our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight, Kyle Lotti from Marion Local. His team defeats Wapak tonight 21 to seven. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.